with the rolly, stole with the rolly on. Who was our getaway car, Jag portfolio? You hear me? Hey, I heard I had some sneak dishes. Whoever feeling hot, that AR got a heat sensor. Cuz said, don't entertain them hungry niggas. I wish I would pay attention to these homeless niggas. I think it's safe to say that in every single draft class, you have the players that go on to have great careers, but then there are also players who are expected to have great careers, but end up falling a little bit short of expectations. YouTube is going on, it's your boy Young Mustard, and in this video we are going to be talking about five of the official draft busts in the NBA right now. Now these are not all the draft busts of all time, but these are just five players in the NBA right now that I think we can officially call draft busts. So I know this is going to be a pretty controversial video, drop a like down below if you enjoyed it, comment down below your opinions if you think I left anybody off this list or if I put somebody on here that shouldn't be on here. Y'all let me know in the comment section and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and put me on notifications. So without further ado, let's get on to player number five. In the 2016 NBA Draft, the Phoenix Suns select Dragan Bender from Croatia. He last played for Maccabi Tel Aviv. In the 2016 NBA Draft, the Phoenix Suns selected with the 4th overall pick, Dragon Bender. And Dragon Bender, don't get me wrong, it's not like he wasn't worthy of that pick at that time, as he had immense potential to, to basically be Christos Porzingis version 2, or at least that's what the Suns were hoping. 7 foot 1, could space the floor and could play defense and move his feet. A lot of people predicted that he would be a really solid player in the NBA. But all of those expectations were met at a screeching halt as in his rookie year he only even played 43 games and averaged a mere 3 points, 2 rebounds and shot 35% from the field and an atrocious 27% from 3. And I know a lot of people are saying that that was just his rookie year and you have to give him time to adjust as he was coming from overseas and not every single player gets it right in their rookie year. Well, in his sophomore season, I present as he averaged 7 points, 4 rebounds, and though he did shoot 36% from 3, he shot an abysmal 38% from the field. Keep in mind, this is a guy who was supposed to be just like Christos Porzingis. Meanwhile, Christos Porzingis in his second year in the NBA was far better than he ever was. Porzingis was averaging 18 points and 7 rebounds and shooting 36% from 3. So it is clear that Dragon Bender was just never somebody who was ever going to be like Porzingis. And right now, though he is still playing in the NBA, he's not kicked out of the league or anything. He's only played 15 out of the 48 games, and he has been absolutely atrocious in all of those games because he's not even shooting 35% from the field, and he's shooting horrible from three, not even 10%. And though he is shooting okay from the free throw line and stuff, these are just not numbers that I can look at and say comfortably that he could even be in the league past this year. He's not even playing enough minutes to where he's even going to be a starter anymore. And honestly, I just don't think Dragon Bender is going to be that good of a player. I don't think he was ever that good of a player. And to give him the expectations of someone like Christos Porzingis obviously just failed. So Dragon Bender, one of the biggest busts of the past five to six years. And I'm sorry, I have to put him on this list the NBA. Orlando is a perfect landing spot because their backcourt is not a good shooting backcourt and I think he fits right in. One of the more talented guys in this draft, only 20 years old. Mario Hazonia had a little bit of some growth last year and I was really happy to see what he would be on the New York Knicks this season. But this season he has been god awful and I'm sorry even though the Knicks have a good solid young core it looks like Mario Hazonia will not be a part of it going forward past this year because the numbers he's put up are atrocious as he's shooting below 40% from the field and 28% from three and I know a lot of people are saying Mario Hazonia was never going to be a great player well when you consider the fact that Mario Hazonia was the fifth overall pick in the 2015 NBA draft yeah, it gets worse. And even when you look at some of the players that below him, Willie Cauley-Stein, Emmanuel Moutier, you also have players such as Justice Winslow, Miles Turner, and then it gets worse when you talk about Devin Booker. Now, you can credit him being a draft bust to the fact that he was drafted to one of the worst organizations in the league in the Orlando Magic, but at the end of the day, if you're the fifth overall pick, 
and you're drafted above players that are clearly better than you, I need more than 7 points on 41% from the field and 32% from 3. I need a little bit more than that. And it's clear that the Magic clearly gave up on him and they traded him to the Knicks because they knew he was a bust. And I'm sorry, I gotta declare from right now going forward, Mario Zonia is also one of the biggest busts that the NBA has ever seen. An excellent finisher at the rim. Uh, Josh Jackson's got everything except Reese, as you mentioned, he is not an accomplished shooter. Like that stroke has got to improve. But with his length and his freak athleticism, I mean, he gets to the rim and finishes like that's a big time finisher there. And he does it with either hand. Now, to be fair to Josh Jackson, I kind of called this before he even got into the NBA because I really didn't see how he was going to work out. And though in his rookie year, he put up solid numbers of 13 points, 5 rebounds while shooting 42% from the field. And also, he did play really solid defense. Let's be real here. Josh Jackson was never really going to amount to much, especially when you consider the fact that that he does not have a consistent jump shot or even a mid-range shot for that matter. Josh Jackson cannot shoot and when you are a wing player and you can't do anything else other than defend at a very high level I will give him that but aside from that that just makes you a Michael Kidd Gilchrist or a Tony Allen and though you can be very versatile you're not going to be a core piece or you should not be a core piece of a franchise and honestly especially when you consider the fact that his draft class was loaded in talent that just makes everything even worse and i know some people are saying it's way too early to call him a bust he's only in his second year but the thing is even though his numbers right now of 10 points and four rebounds are not exactly horrible by any means one he's on the worst team in the nba the phoenix suns who are tanking and he's putting up empty stats and the numbers that he's putting up aren't that impressive so just imagine him being on a team that has a winning system he wouldn't even be playing that much and also when you consider the fact that they drafted Mikel Bridges who is another forward who is more than likely going to take his spot in the future plans for the Phoenix Suns organization that just shows they already have his replacement and he's going to be a trading piece in the future and I've already predicted that so if you haven't seen that video you go check that out but I'm sorry Josh Jackson one of the biggest busts that the NBA has ever seen, and I know it may be a bit too early, but I'm calling it right now. Milwaukee Bucks were off to a much better start this season compared to last year when they only won 15 games total, but that was before the team announced that Tuesday, Jabari Parker is expected to miss the rest of the season. Parker, who was the second overall pick in this year's draft, will have surgery for a torn ACL in his left knee. Parker... Now the case of Jabari Parker is one of the saddest cases in the NBA and the most saddest case on this list because it's really not all about his talent but it's really about injuries that have derailed his career. I mean he was drafted in 2014 as the second overall pick and literally from his rookie year injuries played a factor in each and every year of his career basically. I mean in his rookie year he only played 25 games before suffering from an ACL injury and he put up really solid numbers in my opinion averaging 12 points, 6 rebounds or shooting 49% from the field. And in his second year, his numbers went up to 14 points by shooting 49% from the field again. And his free throw percentage went up from 70% to 77%. And in his third year, he had his breakout year. And in my opinion, should have been selected for an all-star appearance because he averaged 20 points, 6 rebounds, along with 3 assists while shooting 49% from the field, 74% from the free throw line, and showed some range finally from 3 as he shot 36% on nearly 4 attempts. So where did it all go wrong for Jabari Parker? Well, for those who don't know, in that 2017 season, he suffered another ACL injury. And when he returned in Milwaukee the next year in 2018, though he did play relatively well, he didn't get that many minutes in the playoffs. And now he signed with the Chicago Bulls, my team. And I was kind of hyped for Jabari Parker in Chicago to see what he would be now that he's on a team and we really don't know what he's going to be after the ACL injury and he looked good in the 2018 season in the time that he played. But the problem was, even though he put up relatively decent numbers of 15 points and 7 rebounds on 46% from the field, he doesn't space the floor very consistently and being a power forward you kind of have to be able to stretch the floor. And honestly, his defense is really the biggest problem because he stayed relatively healthy this year, but defensively, he's been 
basically a liability as he can't switch on pick and rolls and in today's league as that is very valuable you can't really have that on a roster that consists of Laurie Markkinen as well so I definitely think that Jabari Parker it really sucks what's happened to him but when you go from the second overall pick and having expectations to be a top player in the NBA sooner rather than later, and now you don't even play on the Chicago Bulls and they're trying to trade you, in my book, that classifies you as a bust. And I think the best comparison actually is young T-Mac, the Toronto T-Mac, who kind of came of age with Vince Carter and was the Pippen to Vince's Jordan, then went to Orlando, got in a situation where he had to score 30 points a game, but I never felt like T-Mac was that kind of player. I always thought the defense and the other stuff that he did was what made him special. Now, I know everyone is going to be super pissed about this selection, but I'm sorry, somebody's gotta say it, damn it. Andrew Wiggins is a bust, and it's become super clear in my life that People should not be putting expectations on players and then not follow through with them. Because Andrew Wiggins, throughout his whole entire career, has been healthy, has had no type of obstacles such as someone like Jabari Parker, and has still not lived up to the expectations. I mean, when you're given the expectations of being the next LeBron James, then the next Kobe Bryant, and then just because you get braids, the next Kawhi Leonard, that is just ridiculous. I mean, let's just look at LeBron James' career. LeBron James in his rookie year averaged 25 and 5, and though he didn't make the playoffs, the next year averaged 27, and in his third year, took his team to the second round of the playoffs, and in his fourth year, literally in his fourth year, went to the NBA Finals. When you look at Andrew Wiggins in his fourth year, he was averaging less than 18 points on 43% from the field and 33% from three as the third option on a team that was the eighth seed and was eliminated in the first round in five games to the Houston Rockets. How was that comparable to LeBron James? I mean, when you look at Kobe Bryant, the other guy who he was compared to, just because he hit a fadeaway, Yes, a fadeaway on Kobe Bryant. Everyone wants to compare him to Kobe. Well, let's look at Kobe Bryant. Because the thing about Kobe Bryant, in his fourth year, he was an all-star, averaged 23 points, 5 assists, 6 rebounds, and also shot 47% from the field and 82% from the free throw line. And you want to know where the Lakers ended up as NBA champions as they won 67 games. And he was the second option. Yeah, he doesn't stack up well to LeBron or Kobe. And right now, when you look at Andrew Wiggins' numbers, they don't even stack up well to Rudy Gay. And shout out to Legend of Winning for this graphic, because I honestly didn't even know this is how bad it's gotten for Andrew Wiggins. And look, Andrew Wiggins is not some trash player who can't be in the NBA. I'm not saying that, because a lot of people assume that when you call a player a bust, that's what you mean. That is not what I am saying at all. I'm not calling him an Anthony Bennett or a Kwame Brown or a Smush Parker. I'm not saying he's those kind of busts. I'm simply saying that he is a player that has failed to live up to the expectations that we've given him and he has not even lived up to the expectations that we've given him now and the bar is completely lowered. All I'm asking for Andrew Wiggins to even be is a consistent player that can score the ball efficiently, show some effort on defense, and also have his numbers contribute to wins but he has consistently not been able to do that and for a player that was touted to be generational and the next face of the NBA that is disappointing and the fact that we've lowered the bar to just being a third or a second option already shows you that he's a bust in that definition of failing to live up to the expectations because when was LeBron James ever deemed oh, he can be the second option on the championship team. When was he ever deemed he can be the third option on the championship team? Never was that ever a possibility of something that we could have imagined for LeBron. And Kobe Bryant eventually became the first option. So Andrew Wiggins, unless he becomes some magical player by tomorrow, right now I'm calling him a bust because he has failed to live up to the expectations that we've given him when he was drafted and even the lowered, completely lowered expectations that we've given him now. So right now, Andrew Wiggins is one of the worst first overall picks in NBA 
history. So you guys in the comment section, y'all let me know what y'all thought about this video. Drop a like down below. I know some people are not really happy with what I said about Wiggins, but I had to go in on him because I expect more from Andrew Wiggins. I expect more from a player that is that gifted. So you guys in the comment section, like I said, let me know if I left anybody off this list or if I put someone on here that you don't agree with. Also subscribe if you're new, subscribe to the second channel, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. The links are down below. Y'all have a great day. I'm out. Peace.